Perua bend. Nice view from the kitchen. Pan fried Perilla Papa pocket pies. Very nice. This is a uh, summer wild edible. Uh, carpenter bees like it. Little purple flowers. And all kinds of bees. Uh, this is perilla mint. That guy's like, what's up? He's not used to me being over here. Showing down with the finger. Uh, so this is perilla mint though, uh, from like Southeast Asia. Uh, this right here, it's kind of a path. You don't need to grow them right up in the path. Uh, so these started off over by the winter shower last year or two ago, over by the winter shower, and it kind of spread around the winter shower. And I may have spread the seeds out around here. You know, I spread seeds all the time. I really don't keep track of the seeds that I spread. So I may have put these back here, you know. Uh, but a lot of the things I do spread don't actually take. You know, it's like I spread seeds, but they don't grow. You know, this one's actually growing. It grows really well uh, around here. It's like a real nice weed. Uh, it spreads and reseeds itself pretty easy. I do want to, you know, eventually I'm going to take these plants out, but I want them to go to seed first, you know. Once they, once the seed stalks are ripe, you know, I'll cut the plant and just shake the plant out. Go around walking around shaking the plant to spread the seeds, you know. Uh, this is an edible. It's also like a medicinal. Uh, oh, whoops. It's like, why is it shaking so much? So it's nice one to have. Uh, I got this grown in the pasture up front and uh, around the winter shower. There's these leaves and it's got like a tinge of purple on the back. There's a lot of different varieties of this. Some of them are all purple, their leaves. And as this ages, the top will turn purple. Got a slight minty taste, you know. Uh, it's different, you know, and the different varieties. I'm sure have different flavor profiles, you know. But it's in the mint family. When I first got here, I had a big patch of this over by the perfect tree. There's a cherry tree in the middle of a clearing. So it's like thick woods, thick woods, thick woods, and then here's this round clearing with this uh, beautifully branched cherry tree. One of the big hornets. They like the figs. I thought it was a uh, stinging nettle at first. So I actually went and poisoned the whole area to get rid of it. And this has some figs, or not some figs, some passion fruit vining up in it, and some other stuff. I'll show what kind that is. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. These ones are getting a little more purple on top. Like that one's really purple on top. They're also growing out there, kind of where I do my showers now. They were originally. There's the tree. 
the perfect tree. I ended up breaking one of its branches when I was clearing that area. Uh, so this is going to be, oh, I'm going to gather more leaves, you know, but uh, a lot of leaves because leaves cook down real fast. This is going to be a summer wild edible perlament and something else. It's getting a little purple. Patch of it over there. I got some ginger growing under that. Patch of it over there. I don't got much goldenrod. This is goldenrod. It's uh, starting to grow over here. I don't really have a whole lot of it growing. So I'm not gonna take much leaves because I don't got a lot and I don't wanna hurt the plant too much. So I want it to produce a lot of seeds and spread out more. Uh, goldenrod has like a, these leaves have like a Tastes like some kind of a seasoning. Uh, almost like a licorice style seasoning. So this is going to be a, uh, a sweet hand pie, semi-sweet hand pie with uh, grass filling. Uh, take a few off of this one. I don't want to take any more off of that one because it's going to need its flowers or it's going to need it. These guys are little babies. But I do like the flavor of this. Well, I don't like it like it. But it'll go well. In the dish. This is a cool thing. It ends up bringing out the clay, mixing the soils, you know, taking that deeper soil that's bentonite clay, taking that deeper soil and bringing it to the surface. These also like the partridge peas. Partridge peas aren't edible, unfortunately. So this is gonna be a hand pie though. I'm gonna pick more greens uh, and uh, do up a like a sweet, sweet thing to dress them with. Full of the perilla. It's just some filter water. I'm gonna get it uh, a quick. Just a small quick fire. Once it gets through that top cardboard. So I do cardboard for like my morning coffee. Just doing a quick fire. I just burn all the cardboard. That's why I got so much cardboard laying around. You know, it takes me a while to go through it, but you know, when you only get cardboard, you buy things instead of having it sitting around. This is gonna be kind of like a quick parboil. It's gonna get it hot as it'll get put those in stir them around a little bit for a second once it's boiling you know once that's pretty much burnt down that'll be boiling give it a stir for a few minutes in there and then kind of so I can squeeze it out you know kind of give it a cleaning a rinse but also I can squeeze it into a tight ball because you know it's so fluffy right now I want it to be like a solid filling so I'm just gonna let this go Close enough to boiling. And it's taken a while. So I kind of just want these to wilt down. 
onto a smaller, tighter mass. And kind of like disinfect them a little in case if they got whatever on it, you know. So this is kind of like your nine to five job right here in the new beginning times, just making food, acquiring, and Processing food, food, water, shelter. Not a bad job. Just gonna let that sit for a second. I really don't want it cooked. Just uh, semi cooked. I can dice it, so I'm going to be dicing these. Squeezed and diced the Pirelli Mint. And then these are pawpaws. Uh, the flavor of a pawpaw, kind of like a mango banana. Uh, but they say you lose most of that flavor when you cook it. Uh, and these seeds I'm going to plant in the woods over by the shack. I don't got any tree planters open. Uh, I want to, I got two, maybe four that I planted. So I had a uh, good success uh, planting these. I planted six seeds in the tree nursery planter several years ago and all six of them sprouted up and were doing good but then uh, this spring transplanted them from the tree nursery to other spots and transplanting them they did not like that they uh you know all of them died I still got one you know that hasn't died yet but it looks like it's going to die so Direct planting these definitely seems like the way to go because transplanting they don't like. Let's see if I can peel this one better. This will just give it more of a custardiness, you know. And I like the name Pawpaw. So Perillo. So this video is a uh, Perillo Pawpaw Ham Pockets. No, Pocket Pies. Perillo Pawpaw Pocket Pies. Somewhere well that above. Uh, and goldenrod doesn't really fit in there. Goldenrod fits in with the flavor profile for this. Pawpaws don't fit in with the flavor profile. But, Pawpaws name does, so. That's what I'm doing, Pawpaws. These are a little dinky, you know. They do get bigger, but they also get smaller, you know. This is just a bad year for Pawpaws. Good year for mushroom, bad year for pawpaws. I'd rather have mushrooms. Because, you know, well, the fruit's good. Uh, I don't really need a fruit. But I do need protein. And it was so rainy, like, uh, the, all of my trees grew, which is really nice. None of the trees I planted died. I didn't have to water anything, you know. And I ended up being here, you know, most of the summer. Well, August. But if I wasn't here, so I could have watered if I needed to, if I didn't need to. So 
So this would be a whole little pawpaw grove. Uh, pawpaws are a good understory tree. They don't seem to mind the shade. But I am going to have to hand pollinate these. Because there's not enough natural pollinators out there for them. Definitely a better fruit to eat just straight out of it. You know, slurping it out of the skin. Because this is messy. To do by hand. Good thing about doing it by hand is you can see you got no worms in it. You know, pawpaws are a clean fruit. Yeah, Emperor is a clean leaf, you know. The bugs don't really go for their leaves. I guess they just don't like mint. Beautiful. Sweet banana mango custard. With a tinge of a chemically aftertaste. Mild though. Because it's ripe, it'd be a stronger chemical flavor if it weren't ripe. Now it's time for the goodness. Okay. Sugar's still good. This is a couple years old. Maybe from back uh, before my society trip. I may have been using this uh, back when I was out here before. So the trick to making a leafy vegetable into a dessert is to give it a lot of sugar. Uh, to make it sweet. And that ought to do the trick. I went with this brown sugar because it's got a little more oomph to it. That molasses in there. That's a bit odd. It's like a peppercorn or something. Must be just like a chunk of molasses. Maybe a. I don't know. Yeah, it tastes good. So that goes in. Uh, so I'm just doing this just for, to make it interesting. Touch of mace. Just kind of like strong nutmeg. Some ginger. Uh, this is like a, perla is a oriental herb. Ginger's kind of oriental, Southeast Asian. Just a touch of ginger as well. Uh, and then kind of my mainstays for this one. Is gonna be cardamom and coriander. So basically, brown sugar, cardamom, coriander is what I'm going with. But then just balancing it out. So that was like maybe a quarter teaspoon of each. And that's maybe like a whole teaspoon of coriander and. Like a teaspoon and a quarter of cardamom. So I'm gonna mix that up and then get ready on the batter. So I got a nice leaf log mixed in there and it's kind of um, you know doing things, turning it into a nice little salad. I thought about maybe giving it an egg but uh, sugars bind it together pretty good as is. So that looks good, I like that. I haven't tasted it yet. I'm just gonna taste it. Uh, uh. Once it's done. So here's the kitchen. What is this? I actually got a sink, so you know, I got filter. And yeah, this is filtered water right here. Goes through a rough filter and then a carbon filter. this so doing this first just so I can see how much I get I don't want to overdo it 
Uh, my salt is up in the shack. So I got about a teaspoon, maybe a little more. Uh, but that was butter extract. Now this is flour. From back in the day. Wow. Butter extract has alcohol in it to emulsify the oils, I guess. But you can kind of almost taste the alcohol. It's just like vodka. I don't know how much this is. A quarter of a cup. I'm going to need more. So this is from back when I was out in the woods before, this flower. It's been in here for a while. So I got another jar of flour. Shooting for, eh, that's probably good. Yeah, that's enough. Uh, I got my salt shaker. This only takes a pinch of salt, I'm thinking. This is going to be kind of like a salty, buttery crust. I'm going to give this a little more water. I want it to be pretty, pretty dry dough. I don't want it to be a pancake batter. So I do non-cooking cooking down here, and you know, this is basically where I make my sandwiches and my wraps, do canned food, and then in the winter I do my cooking down here, but it's too hot to cook inside in the summer. Unless you have like AC and electricity and all that, and then it's kind of like you might as well. You know, modern kitchens, you do it all inside, but going old school. You need an outdoor kitchen. I don't want to give it too much water. I can quickly go from not enough to too much. Once it hydrates that flour, it quickly gets loose and runny. So I'm thinking a uh, sweet filling with a salty crust, buttery salty crust with a sweet filling. Kind of what I'm shooting for, but not an overly salty crust, you know, but I do want to give it salt. That's close. Just one more spit of water. So you never know how much you're putting in there. Which is why I wanted to do the butter first so I could actually get a read on it. And I probably did a little too much butter. This smells like butter. Butter and alcohol. Uh, maybe one more spritz. So the good thing about the Prilla is it's uh, good for the pollinators. Like the uh, passion flower vine was the primary, but now it's uh, starting to fizzle out the passion flower vines. They're nearing the end of their season, but now the perilla's coming into bloom. So there's always, you know, it's like a, it's a next step, you know, for the pollinators. Keep them pollinating. Keep them around. So it's nice to have it. Yeah, that's a nice thick dough right there. So I'm going to bring this up to the shack. So I gave it about a quarter teaspoon of salt. 
Uh, I don't get any flour. I don't got any flour up here. This is in the shack. So I'm using some pancake mix. I got pancake mix up here. Get a little bit out. I don't want it to. I'll dump out at once. So I'm gonna make four hand pies. Looks like four hand pies would be a good amount of filling in each. No, pocket pies. This is just some scrap cardboard. I barely mixed the salt in, so I'm going to give it a little bit of a knead right now to kind of further incorporate that flour. Bit runnier than I thought. Once it hydrates, it really takes off. I'm just using this pancake batter, pancake mix, this is dry flour to work it. So I'm just going to quarter this to make it into four. Since it turned September, it turned nice. But it's actually going to be another warm one today. I think it's supposed to be up to 90. It's been lower 80s, mid to lower 80s.
receive their Messiah. God's not going to hammer them because he hates them. He loves them. But sometimes even he's kind of like hit over the head with a two by four by God for him to get our attention. Creating little wings and folding those wings in. Just to kind of get some fresh odors. Don't really need that for Ampi. Okay, this is the tricky part. Let's kind of pinch it, I guess, for now. Squeezing it like a pizza. I want it really thin. Maybe like a three sixteenth, an eighth, three sixteenth thick. Basically making a uh, six inch circle. That looks good. Yeah, I'm going to do them all like this before I put in the filling. Because uh, I don't want to get my, you know, sticky sugars onto this. You know, that would be a, something I want to avoid. So I'm going to go ahead and do them all flat. Make them nice, like, little... Pita's almost. Looking good, looking good. Let's get some water right there. This is just plain filtered water. Just gonna put these edges. So that sticks better. Like the sugar could mess with it. So, and maybe not stick, you know. So I got some sugar juice in there. That's the bag it was in. You know, these this uh, stuff was in the uh, zip block. Probably about 45 minutes now. While I've been working on this dough, and over that time, it uh, drew out the moisture. All the sugar in there drew the moisture out of the uh, leaves so there's a lot of like not a lot but you know I could I got enough sugar juice in that ziploc to use that but uh, it may like caramelize the seam and not turn out that good you know maybe like a sweet roll where it kind of wants to break apart right there now, I don't want these to break apart so I'm going with straight water to be traditional about it. Uh, good thing about letting it sit for 45 minutes, the Perilla Mash, Perilla Paw Paw filling, uh, is it's now drier. You know, it's had time to extract that moisture out of there. So these ham pies will uh, probably won't get soggy. They'll probably stay nice and firm. Uh, and hopefully won't get soggy, you know. Like if, had, if I had all that moisture in there, it gets soggy after an hour or two, after a couple hours. But this way, hopefully it won't. It's a nice firm ball, you know, most of the liquid. 
to see all that liquid in there. Yeah, that's a fair amount of liquid, probably about a tablespoon. Uh, this is going to take two hands. The sugar brings out the mintiness of it. juice in there still. It's a lot more than I thought. Getting ready for that Gog Magog war. So I'm going to poke some holes in there before I fry it, but I'm going to let it sit for now and poke the holes right before I fry it because i got to get a fire going. Looking good. Just put a little bit of oil in there. scissors because I have them convenient. There's some little air holes to let steam out. Got some charcoalified. It was blowing pretty steady that way so I set up my chair over here. Looks like maybe it's going to be a back and forth wind. Some charcoalified wood for a nice, slow, steady burn. I'm 
not too much smoke. So these cinder blocks have cracked. Cracked. The ants did some things, you know, so this great no longer sits in there nice. So it's out of level. So I'm just kind of uh, moving it uh, moving it around. Uh, I'm gonna let those go for a while. Flip them. Let them go for a while. Uh, and do the other one. Start back up on it on. Filling coming out. It's good. It's definitely not a traditional flavor. It's kind of like a sweet mint. You don't taste anything green. Can't taste the prilla. I mean, you taste the mint from the prilla, but not the green from it. But you kind of have that leafy texture. Prilling has a texture of leaves. You were blindfolded and didn't know what you were eating. You probably wouldn't know it was leaves. You'd just say it was like some kind of mint, sweet mint pastry. Very good. Well, not very good. Very different. Good, but different. Bit of a hassle making the bread. I like doing the uh, final roll of the bread. And pancake batter, pancake mix instead of straight flour. It does give it like a 
a little bit of a fluffiness to it. It's kind of like the the bread is kind of like the consistency of a donut slash Totino's pizza crust. Summer snows are starting to set in. A little fluffs blowing on the breeze. In traditional. Asian cuisine, where they use the pura. I don't think they really make it sweet. They use it like savory. They stuff meats and rice and stuff. You know, wrap it around meats and rice and various other things. Not this variety of pura. Pura element. But, you know, there's more varieties. They're all pretty similar. Definitely a good way to mix it up. I heard the snow flurries. Nice way to make it into a dessert. This is like a legit dessert right here. Just squeezing out all that juice. Minty, sugary syrup. That's a nice thing to try. This is how I make out for Tribulations. It would be a nice way to mix it up. You know, eating the mint for so long. And then, uh, what do you call it? Like just plain in a salad. And making something sweet out of it every now and again. Maybe brew some beer with it. Sugar, water, and mint leaves. And the sugar and water make the alcohol. And the mint leaves will make it like a minty alcohol. Minty beer. Maybe something like that. <clears throat> Probably... Like a beverage with some sassafras roots. Sassafras roots are, uh, and more goldenrod leaves. Sassafras roots are like licorice root beer. Goldenrod is kind of like licorice. Licorice something, you know. Uh, and then some mint, you know. Uh, so it does have medicinal. It is a good medicinal. I'm going to save those for later. I'm going to go to town. So I put it in the pan, did pan frying. I just wiped out the pan you know, with some paper towel, and that'd be kind of the fire start for the next turn. Uh, no, no point in washing it. Do it in the pan, because it's pan fried, so it sounds good. And so I can go to town. You know, I don't want to wait for that. That oil would have to cool down while I'd be in town, and when I get back from town, I'd have to put the oil back in the container, and I'd just, you know, uh, I like wrapping it up before I go, so. 
That's it for this one though. Pan fried Perillo Papa pocket pies. Uh, different, all right. Uh, probably won't make again for a while.